Everybody knows i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Bye now. Ha ha ha. Okay, let's do some math for fun. And this time, I really mean it. We are going to answer what is i. Of course, we can just give the regular answer first, which is just saying that i is equal to square root of negative 1, right? Well, done deal. But no, I'm not going to stop right here because otherwise, this will just be a 10 second video, right? <laughs> so I'm going to give you guys two more answers, right? So have a look right here. And for the second one, I actually have to tell you guys this first. I have a small issue with the OEDAS formula for a while now. And yes, you guys are hearing that uh, cut on camera. Let me just tell you guys what it is first. Here we have e to the iz. This right here is equal to cosine z plus i sine z. The famous Euler's formula. But notice, we have the i right here, and we also have the i right here. And no, we are not talking about this i. We have these two i's on both sides of the equation. And now I remember my algebra teacher used to tell me that we cannot have the same variable or the same thing or the same letter on both sides of the equation, right? And I know some of you guys are saying that, how about the z, z, z? No, I'm not asking what is z, I'm asking what is i? So maybe later on in the video or the other video, whatever. So in this video right here, I will first show you how to solve for i from this equation. And what we end up with is just an equation that will always produce the i for you, which is pretty cool. So here we go. Right here, I'm going to consider e to the i negative z. So I'm going to plug in negative z into here and here. And because cosine is even, so when we have negative z right here, this is still the same as cosine z. But when you put negative z right here, we can put a negative on the outside. So we have negative and we have the i sine z right here. And yes, this is going to be really similar to the sine z is equal to 2 video. But this time, we actually consider cosine for the first time. <laughs> because now you can see, when we add these two equations up, this and that will cancel nicely. And we just have the i right here, which is just going to be e to the i z plus e to the negative i z. And this is just equal to 2 cosine z. And now let's just go through the algebra right here. I'm going to multiply everybody by e to the i z. This times this is going to be, yes, just e to the i z squared. So I'll put this down right here. And then next we have this times that, which is just going to be plus 1. So I'm actually going to put it down right here. Because this times this, well, I'm actually going to bring that to the other side. So we actually get a negative, and we have 2 cosine z times that, which is the e to the i z right here. And everybody will be equal to 0 right here. Well, you can see that this right here is actually the quadratic equation in terms of e to the i z. So we know by the quadratic formula, e to the i z will be equal to negative b, which is going to be negative of this, which is negative 2 cosine z and then we are going to plus or minus square root of open the parentheses for the b square so negative 2 cosine z square and then minus 4ac a is 1 and c is also equal to 1 so let's go ahead and put on 1 and 1 right here which is very nice and then all divided by 2 times a again is 1 so this is what we have now have a look on the left hand side we just have e to the i z Man, we all have we only have the i one time. It's very nice, right? But anyway, let's just fix this real quick. This is going to be two cosine z and then plus or minus. And let's just do this in your head, yeah. This is going to be four cosine square z. We have the four, and this is also going to be a four right here, but the minus right here, of course. We can factor out the four in the square root, so it's actually become a two right here, and then we just have the square root, and then we will have the cosine square z and then minus 1, right? And then all divided by 2. Well, of course, we can just cancel the 2's out like so. And then we can just do what? Take the natural log on both sides. And we are going to divide the z on both sides. So what do we get? Ladies and gentlemen, have a look. i is equal to, well, I should say i am equal to, 1 over z. Right? Let me just put it down right here. And z can be on the bottom. It likes to be on the bottom anyway. Well, I don't know. I have not talked to him for a while. Anyway, 1 over z. And then take the natural log, right? And then just put everything inside. So here we have cosine z and then plus or minus square root of 
cosine square z and then minus 1. Everybody inside. Ta da! This equation, you, this is like the equation they can prank your friend, you know? It's like you give them this and tell them, hey, z is equal to, let's say, 3 plus 7i, whatever, or like, I don't know, uh, pi over 2 or whatever you really want, right? Just put it here into all the z's, and you know the final result will be what? Yes, it's just going to be nicely equal to i. Why? Because we did it. I did it. <laughs> then, I, I don't know, I never thought about this, and then I just thought about this like, on the other night. I thought it was really fun. So now for the third one, I will actually use the blue pen right here. Alright, what we are going to do is, well, we are going to plug in pi over 2 into the z right here, and we'll end up with e to the i pi over 2. That's being equal to, cosine of pi over 2 is just equal to 0, sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, 1 times i is just equal to i. So this is what we have. And now, again, we have the same issue, huh? We have the i on both sides of the equation. So what we're going to do is, again, same thing, we'll solve for i right here. And for this one though, we actually have to use the Lambert W function. So let's just see how this will work. I'm actually going to kind of divide this on both sides, but I will actually write down the i first, and then I will have e to the negative i pi over 2, and then this is equal to 1, right? And now, you see we have the e to this power. Well, this is very nice because what? All we need to do is make sure this and that match, so we can take the number W function. So all we need is just the negative pi over 2, so let's go ahead and multiply by negative pi over 2, and let's multiply by negative pi over 2, right? Now, because this and that are equal, we can just take the Lambert W function on both sides, and on the left hand side here, we'll just get this back, which is negative pi over 2i, and that's equal to w of negative pi over 2. Finally, if you want to know what i is, I can tell you i is just equal to you multiply by the reciprocal of that, which is negative 2 over pi times the Lambert W function of negative pi over 2. Aha! How cool is this? So next time, when somebody is asking you what is i, you have more options now. At least you have two more options. And if you have other ways to tell people what is I, you can leave a comment down below and let me know, right? So thank you for watching. That's it.